Microsoft Word 2013, as well as Word 2010 and 2007, have built-in table capabilities. But these tables, although they are quick and easy to use, they are limited in the layout and the formatting of the table. Generally, the built-in table will have column headings and then maybe some cell color for the rows and the columns for your data. And that's about all. But Word also allows us to build custom tables, which we have more capabilities. Since there are numerous options when customizing tables, I'll break it up into two parts. In the first part, I'll discuss inserting a blank table to start with, then adding some columns and rows to our inserted table, merging and splitting cells to create custom areas for our data, and moving contents from one cell to another. I've opened up a new blank document in Word 2013. To insert a blank table, I just need to click on the Insert tab and in the Tables group under Tables, there are a couple different ways that I can insert a blank table. One is I can use this dimension area. So this will tell me how many columns and how many rows. I can have up to 10 columns and 8 rows doing it this little area. If I needed more, then all I need to do is click on Insert Table and I can say how many exact columns, how many rows do I need. I'm just going to use this fast area and say 3 by 8. Now, once I have the blank table on the page, that's not the end-all be-all. If I did happen to need another column, I can insert another column. If I have a blank table, all I need to do is click whatever column I have, highlight it, you'll see that my cursor turns into a little black down arrow, highlight the whole column, and there's this nice little pop-up window that opens up in 2013. So I can click on Insert Table, and this is if I wanted a row above, a row below, insert to the left of a column, insert right column. So I just want to say insert left. Since the table's blank, it doesn't matter where I insert the column. Now I have a total of four columns. I also know I need more rows than just eight. So to insert rows, there's several different ways that we can do that. One is I can highlight on a row, and again this nice little dialog box opens up, and I can say insert either above or below the position I'm at. I'm just going to say below. but Let's say I need another row. I can also right click, go to insert, and this works with the columns and the rows. So I can say row above, row below. And lastly, if I have a row selected, I can go to layout and in rows and columns on the layout tab, I can insert a row above or row below. Now I need a total of 14 rows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to this last position, this last cell. One of these boxes creates a cell, and I'm just going to hit the Tab key, and every time that I get to that last box, it creates a new row. So I need a total of 14 rows. Now that I have four columns and 14 rows, I'm going to start typing in my data. Now the most boring thing that you could possibly do is watch me type, so I'm going to pause the video, type in the data, and then come back to you. Now that I have my data inside my table, I can start manipulating it to make it look the way that I want it to look. First thing is I do want the name of my business to be a little bit larger and in a different font, so I'm just going to choose Arial Rounded. There are several ways that I can get there from here. Since the Home tab was already selected, I can just go up to my font group, change the font, change the size to the size that I want, and again, my table is just making room for all of my data in this one cell. And let's say I also want to change the font size of this guy to maybe a 12. And I can do this for each of these cells, change the font. It's just like changing font in a regular document. I do want the registration form to be a little bit more fancy, so in the font group I'm going to use a font effect. And I'm going to choose this fill with gray 25% background 2 with an inner shadow. I want to change the font to Arial rounded, I think that looks okay, and I do want it a little bit larger. 
You'll see it's kind of pushing things around and resizing my table, but that's okay. I'm going to fix that later. On a couple of the cells in my table, I would like child information, parent guardian information, credit card information, and for office use only to be in all capitals. I could have typed it in that way, could have keyed it in that way, but in all honesty, I forgot. So instead of retyping that, what I'm going to do is select my text. I'm going to hold down the control key and go get some more text of the parent guardian information, the credit card information, and for office use only. By holding down the control key, it allows me to select data that is not adjacent to one another. If I hold down the shift, let's say I put my cursor right before the in in name and I hold down the shift and I click somewhere else, it's going to grab everything in between those two clicks. But for non-adjacent information, I just hold down control and highlight what I want to select. So again, just going to highlight those areas. And on the Home tab, in the Font group, in the Change Case icon, I'm going to click on it and select Uppercase. This way, I didn't have to retype it. I made Word do the work for me. I'm looking at my table, and as it turns out, I do need one more column. I would like to put the Scarborough Kung Fu School in a column all by itself. So I'm going to click on the first column. Again, my icon changes to a down black arrow. And I have this nice pop-up. I'm going to insert my column to the left. This opens up this new column. So now I have a total of five columns in my table. Right now the column is selected. I know that because it is gray highlighted in that whole entire column, which is great, but let's say I click away from it and I actually wanted to do something else in that column like merge all the cells so it's one big space instead of all these little spaces, all 14 different spaces. So what I would need to do is again highlight the column and I can just click on the whole entire column and I want to merge. There's several different ways of merging your cells. One is to go to the Table Tools Contextual tab, go to the Layout tab, in the Merge group, click on Merge Cells. That's one way of doing it. Another way is to right click. Whenever you are in a cell, in a table, highlighted text, if you right click, it will show you exactly what you can do with that function. So whether it's merging, splitting, uh, resizing, playing with the font, whatever it is, if you right click on it, it usually tells you everything that you can do with it. Okay, now that I have that area merged, I'm going to move the Scarborough Kung Fu School block of information over into this cell. Again, a couple of ways to do this. One is to highlight the data, do a cut and a paste. But I think that's too difficult or too many steps to do. So all I'm going to do is highlight it, grab it with the mouse, and then drop it by letting go of the mouse. I also want to move over the registration form information. So I'm going to again highlight it, click on it, and I can move it anywhere in this table just by dragging and dropping. It's looking much, much better. I'm going to show you one more way of doing that. So I'm going to undo when I moved over registration form. So there is, you can highlight it, go to the insert, uh, pardon me, go home, do a copy and a paste. But here now I have to go back and delete what I left. If I would have done a cut, so again, I'm going to just move it back to where it was. If I did a cut instead of a copy, click on cut. Seems like it disappeared, but it didn't. It's on my clipboard. If I want to know what's on my clipboard, pardon me, all I have to do is expand my clipboard and it shows me what is on my clipboard. I go to the place where I want to paste it. I select which one I want to paste and it pastes there. Let me copy that. There we
There we go. I can clear everything that's on my clipboard and keep going. So right now the Scarborough Kung Fu School takes up quite a bit of space and that's really not the most important thing on this form. Not the most important item. So what I want to do is I want to keep it here in the first column but I want to manipulate how it sits in this cell. So right now the alignment is horizontal which is normal text but I'm going to change the cell's layout so on the layout tab in the alignment group I'm going to click on text direction and I do I might need to click this multiple times to see how I want it to line up so if I click it once mm, that's not bad actually but uh, it seems a little backwards so I'm going to click again and that seems much better to realign it I do see maybe this font could be a little bit large so there we go, it fits a little bit better. Now it's sitting in the cell vertically, the alignment, but we can change the alignment of the text within the cell. So we change the direction to a vertical alignment, but we can also change it to where it either sits in the middle or it sits on top. It's uh, it's a little backwards thinking but it's top left when everything lines up on the top left so this is left of the cell if I wanted it on the right cell then I want to see what's going on with my cell really quickly because I did click right and nothing happened so a trick that I've learned over the years is if I go onto the home tab and I click on the all characters I can see exactly why it did not line up to the right it's all these extra paragraph markers. So if I get rid of all these extra paragraph markers, then it will follow the alignment that I want. So that's a little trick I've learned. There's a few other cells that I want to merge and there's something that I may want to split up. So I'm going to choose to take this first second cell with the registration form and I'm going to merge it to the cell to the right so there's a couple ways of doing this one is I can go to the layout I highlight my cells and I say merge cells a quick way of doing it I found out with 2013 we have an option of erasing borders now it's not just the color of the border it's actually merging the cells so on the layout tab in the draw area I'm going to click on eraser and what this does is as long as I just click on the line it erases the border between these two cells and in essence merges it so I'm going to merge a few of these other cells so parent guardian information is merged to the right credit card information is merged to the right uh, this area I'm just clicking and holding and going over both of those lines and merging that cell next to notes. Office use, I'm going to do three of those lines and merge that area. I have noticed that sometimes it does erase what's in it, so I'm going to undo. I'm going to click on the lines individually, the dividers inv individually. One, two, and three. Now that I have my cells merged where I want them, for office use only, this cell, I actually need one more cell underneath it. So to split this cell into two, what I'm going to do is go to the layout, go to merge, and I can split cells. Again, I could have right clicked, but since my layout tab was already open, split cells. Instead of two columns, I want one column. I can either use my up and down arrows to change these numbers, or I can toggle the up and down arrows or I can just type. So I want two rows and one column. Now I've added a row in essence. I've split this cell. And if I had uh, a cell over here, you could see that I actually split the cell versus really adding a row. It didn't add one right here, a row uh, against the Scarborough Kung Fu School. It did add it just underneath the office use only. Let's summarize what we did in Custom Tables Part 1. We inserted a blank table by going to our Insert tab and 
telling it how many rows and how many columns we wanted. After our table was inserted, we added some columns after the fact, and likewise with rows. We merged and we split some cells to resize some areas, and we moved some cell contents around by just dragging and dropping, as well as cut and paste and copy and paste. In 